Live from Atlanta, Georgia. Live from the Rock Hill, South Carolina, in the Bear Cave. It's the Keto Show. You got Mike and you got Lee smoking bears. Howdy, howdy. He, he's smoking bears. I'm your reformed fat man. And this is where we do a live cook every week. Uh, Lee also does one on Sunday, so tune him in on Sunday. He does it on uh, at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. That's Eastern time, by the way. So, but tonight, we're going to make cheeseburgers. Yep. Now, Lee, what what you got planned for your cheeseburgers? So, and like Mike said, we're doing burgers. Burgers, uh, not necessarily cheeseburgers, just burgers. Yeah. I'm sorry. He threw out, he, he texted me and said, hey, let's do burgers. Of course, my head goes 17 different ways. Oh, I narrowed God. it down to three. One kind of went by the wayside. I, I forget what it was. But this is one I've been wanting to do, and I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a stuffed Reuben burger. Now, I've seen where people do smash burgers, put the corned beef on it and all, and the sauerkraut, and then the dressing, and that's fine. It's not what I'm doing. Today, we're going to try to do a – I'm going to wrap the burger around a jar to give me a cup, put in some sauerkraut, some corned beef, top it with Swiss, and I'm going to cook it in a Dutch oven. A what? James, my friend, I got I got my 12-inch Dutch oven that I call lidless because when I bought it, it had no lid. But I have a cook grate in it that will get it up off the ground, off the bottom, up just shy of a knuckle. So I get it up you know, by half an inch or so. So I'm hoping that the heat from the sides – will give me an even cook all the way around and be able to get it done within about 30, 40 minutes. There you go. That's my thought. And then I have, because my wife's always, you got to have a side dish. <laughs> I picked this up. It is a rice cauliflower risotto medley. And I, I had to read it four times just to make sure because I can't say it fast. But the only ingredients is cauliflower, mushrooms, and asparagus. So we're going to give that a whirl. Mikey, what do you got? Well, I'm going to do an inside-out cheeseburger using the Mission Tortilla. Not Mission. I'm sorry. The Extreme Wellness. Zero net carbs, street tacos. And the inside out comes where the cheese is going to be on the outside. And I also have a, a uh, side dish. Mine's going to be broccoli salad. Ooh. I don't have the broccoli salad made yet, but it won't take but a minute and a half to make it. I've already got the broccoli worked up, so that's the hardest part of it. <laughs> so... But Honey Badger says he is making burnt cheeseburgers as he as we speak. He's cooking right with us. Yep. All right. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Yep. So, so uh, broccoli salad. I absolutely love broccoli cauliflower salad. My grandma used to make that, and I would eat it till I was sick. Yep. And even now. We'll go to Sam's Club, and I'll either buy the bag mm -hmm. that has everything in it. It's like, I mean, we can make it. It's just I'm lazy. Or they now have the pre-made, like you buy it by the in the deli pack. Yeah. And it's already, oh, my goodness. I have to, I have to like, split it in half, and then my wife takes it. Like, I'll eat about half of it, and then the wife takes the other half, and Leaves me sit there licking my wounds. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have found that I can, if I pick up, pick the right time, I can get the prepackaged uh, florets on sale, and they'll be a whole lot cheaper than buying the whole, you know, the other. It's still fresh broccoli, 
it's just in a bag and it's just florets and I can get it cheaper than I can buy in the florets by, by the pound or by the, you know, with the stalks and the florets. Yeah. Uh, I do have a thing that I make that I haven't made in a while, but I made, I make a kind of like a French fry out of the stalks. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, so I will, when I want to do that, I'll buy the uh, broccoli still on the stalk. Uh, if you want to try that, you got to peel it first because that outer it, covering of it is kind of tough. Uh, but I, I I prefer the florets because I, but I you still got to work it up. You still got to cut it up because those are pretty big florets in there. So, but it's not like you dealing with the big the stalk and all too. So it works out, and I I lo- I am a my favorite meal of all meals is meatloaf with, with broccoli of some sort and a mash. It used to be potatoes. Now it's a mashed either part of palm or uh, um, cauliflower mash. That is my favorite meal of all time. My wife just got a cauliflower mash the other day, and uh, that, that was really good. Like it was a store bought one coming in a little plastic tray. Yeah. And and it was really good. I was pretty pretty impressed with it. The they Kroger, if you if you live anywhere where a Kroger or one of their affiliate type stores, Ralph's or whatever else that they've got, they've got a ton of them. Smith's is another one. Uh they have a Kroger brand cauliflower mash. And they have different flavors. And it's in the freezer section. And they're really good. And and they're very very uh, keto friendly. They, you know, there's a few things in there that the diehard keto people won't touch. But it's not, you know, it's it is a it is hard to to beat. I mean, you by the time you go and get the cauliflower and do everything you got to do to mash it up and do it all like that, you have spent a lot of time. Let's let's face it, it's labor intensive making cauliflower mash from scratch. Yeah. And, but it's also, while it's labor intensive, it's, this tastes as good as anything I have ever made myself. And when I can say that, I'm, hey, I'm not opposed to using theirs. You know, if, it, if I can't duplicate it and make it better, I don't mind buying it because it's really, the cost is not that much different. Because if you take a pack of cauliflower, or, and you cook it, it's going to be about the size of what, and you mash it, it's going to be about the size of what that container is that you bought. Pretty much, pretty close to it. So I'm going to get the season in my meat. Yep. Just for the, uh, for the cast iron guys, I got lidless, my 12 inch Dutch oven. And the reason why she's called lidless is because she doesn't have a lid. I bought it without a lid, and I just haven't gotten one. I've got this glass ones, but this glass one that works on all lodges. So, oh, but I also have this one here. It is a three notch. You can't see it. It is a three notch lodge, twelve inch. So we're running, running these two today. I love that name, lidless. That's great. <laughs> It, it was one of those I was like, you know, I, I kind of, you kind of get into, you know, you have a car, you name it, right? Yep. And I do that with my cast iron because I tend to, you're, you're forming a relationship with it. Right. Yeah. You know, and you, you take the time to, to keep these things in pristine, in, in good, good work and order, right? Yeah. It's just, just like you do your car. You change the oil. You do, you know, check the tires. You're doing the same thing with the cast iron. Right. Now, what I put in here, folks, is uh, garlic powder, and onion powder, and Uncle Steve's original shake. Oh, and by the way, if you're looking for a taste test tonight from the Mrs. Miss Page, the lovely Miss Page is not here. She's at our son's house, uh, spending time with our youngest granddaughter. 
I'm not there because somebody's got to take care of the dogs. So this stuff is still frozen. Oh yeah. I'm gonna toast it in my cast iron skillet. There you go. Okay, so now I'm gonna move over to the meat. And what I have is a pound of, I don't even know what it is. It's some, I got it on sale. It's like some steakhouse, Angus, something or other. I don't know. Yeah, I got mine on sale too. It was like three bucks and it was because it was on the last day for it. And I normally I've been using sausage lately because it's so much cheaper. But since it was on the clearance thing, I said let's go for the real shebang. Uh our treasured homes said, how are you doing? Hey Nancy. Let me see this. Trying to divide this in thirds. So this is me and my brother-in-law, and I'm just going to have one, and I will guarantee you he will have two. And that's too much in that one. Not enough in that one. I got I got to look, and I took my knife inside to wash it, and I have I forgot to bring it back out. <laughs> Oh, me. You sound like me. So, but anyway, uh, let's see. James says I have names for a lot of my cast iron. My wife thinks it's crazy, but <coughs> you know, it's I, I kind of beg to differ with her, but you know, I don't think it's crazy. I name my automobiles. Terry, how you doing? Madwood, barbecue chicken, homestyle baked beans for tonight. Hey, Madwood. Ooh, homes barbecue chicken and baked. Oh, you are tempting me. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I I went looking today for. Uh, more cast iron, but didn't find any. The thrift stores around me have been kind of duds lately. Same here. Same here. I've not had much luck with the thrift stores. I've gotten stuff at the thrift stores that was pretty good that was uh, like um, mason jars, things like that. Yeah. And then both of them won't come with lids, but you gotta go buy some lids. But you know, the mason jars they come in real handy. Yeah, I use mason jars all the time. Yep, yeah, I'm a big fan of mason jars, I put stuff in them. And I, let's see. All right, so what I've done is I just took the two patties or the, the pound of of meat and broke it off into two patties. Get them kind of wide. I'm going to take this plastic wrap. I really do not like plastic wrap. I, I've always, hey, like, not liked it. Just because well, it's a pain. It has a mind of its own. Yes. And it won't listen to anything you say. No. You can cuss it all day long, and it still won't listen to you. And I bet. Um, you know, everything but what you want it to cling to. And that makes me upset. Bud Files, good to see you. Bud Files, how you doing? Yeah. Oh. Bat 13, cool. good to see you. Yep, Bat 13. All right. All right, so now I'm going to take the saran wrap around the around the mason jar, stick it right in the center. Yep. And then 
if it all works right. Barbecue Rockstar. Hey, John. I should be able to form this around like so. Oh, yeah. Kind of squat it down a little bit so it's Okay. You just need it to form the bowl. To form the bowl, that's it, right there. You see that? Yep. Let's see if I can't get this one here to do the same thing. Lots of concentration on this one. So, Mike, how's your uh, how's how's your your walking and stuff going? I've been getting about a mile walk every day. Um, last couple of days, I I mean, it's been a chore because my right hip has been bothering me, and I don't know why. I've never had hip problems. I wonder if it's got something to do with the weather. It might, because like I was. Uh, I made a comment the other day, and um, uh, James had, Honey Badger had said something in the comment about they was having trouble sleeping too. So it got me thinking, you know, sometimes when you got like arthritis and the storms are getting ready to come in and you, uh, you know, you start feeling it in your joints. Right, yeah. And, and, you know, like animals, especially fish, when the barometric pressure changes, mm -hmm. they're all over the place, right? Yes. I wonder if some of the not sleeping has something to do with, like, barometric pressure. Huh. That's a thought. I mean, what? I really don't know, but. Will you hear that sizzle? Oh, yeah. I love that sizzle. So I'm trying to move these up to this rack. Uh-huh. And it do they, they don't want to seem to stay round so we'll, we'll do the best we can with it i have no idea what the fat content of this meat is because the sales sticker they had on it was covering that part of it that happens with mine too All right, so now I've already got a can of um, can of corned beef that I already mashed up and heated, so I can layer it in the bottom here. There you go. So I season the inside, and I'm going to season the outside a little bit too. Don't want to put too much because the salt queen's not here. Plus, we've had to watch it because my brother-in-law he can't have salt and he doesn't have he doesn't like to have pepper on there either because it messes with his sinuses a little. So, but you know, got to season it up, and he doesn't mind the um, garlic powder, onion powder, and Uncle Steve's. He's doing all right with it. Good. So, Uncle Steve's man, that's some good stuff. Yes, it is. It is real good. I love Uncle Steve's stuff, and this is the original. Now, I'm just gonna put a little bit of cracked black pepper. 
There you go. And then, oh, Nancy's going to get a pacemaker put in next week. Oh, hate to hear that. I mean, I hate to hear that. I'm, I was sorry I got started reading, but unless it's a good thing, and you yeah. got my wife has one, and it's been a big difference maker. And John, barbecue rock star, he's having both hips replaced. I wish you luck and prayers for you, John. And yeah. that's prayers for you as well. So now I'm adding the sauerkraut. I'd already heated up the sauerkraut with an onion. The, the way that I do do my sauerkraut is I I get it started in the pour a whole jar it's like a quart jar uh huh I'll pour it into my skillet get it going and I'll throw uh -huh. it in right. I just toss it until the onion gets translucent once that happens then it's done. I gotta believe this is a low fat count because I'm not seeing a lot of fat and I'm not seeing uh it's it's uh not showing me a lot of fat, so it must be a low fat count and it's not wanting to stay together real well. Look at that folks, that looks so good right there. Oh wow. We're gonna try it. That's gonna be dim jim dandy jam up and jelly tight. So <laughs> Hey, Pickles. What's up, Charlie? Make your own crowd. It could be easier. That's something I do want to I want to get to doing later on. Same here. Um, so this is a large 12-inch glass lid. I bought it separate because this skillet, I have a couple skillets that didn't have lids. And I didn't want the um, the 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 iron lid. You know, right. you get you want to see what's going on, right? Like right now, you want to see what's going on. And uh, so I got this glass lid, and it fits every lodge that I have. Oh wow! Like this is right. probably the oldest lodge that I have, and it's a. Uh, Around 1987 to 90, 97, around uh -huh. um, It fits that, and it fits this Dutch oven. It fits my brand new stuff. So that's a that's a good thing. Anybody looking for a lid, you find these glass lids. You don't have the the issue with the 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 cast iron lid. And by issue, I mean they have the dimples on them, and they can they rust because it holds condensate, right? Right. So you have to spray the lid to use it. At least I, that's something I found is I would spray the lid with oil, then put it on top, and then that way it would resist the water. Yep. Yep. I got to get a roll of paper towels. My wife has used up all these in here, so I'm going to get a roll out of the garage. I'll be right back. So it's just salt, cabbage, and thyme, huh? That sounds... It's on my list, Charlie. You know my list is like so long. It's kind of like that kimchi, right? Is that a drug channel? No. No. Silly. All right, so now I also got to so now the other thing that I got to do why this is posting over here and my patties are doing something. I don't know what they're doing, but we're going to crank this heat up. 
There you go. You know what, Charlie? That's a good idea. Let me see if I can find my my probes. He just sent me a message via via telekinesis. He's wondering what the temperature is on the inside there. Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, so I don't know. Let me find a. I don't know where my probes are. Imagine that. You on the bar line? Yeah, I can do that. I can use this one, I guess, where I can. So it's only showing 100 degrees right now. Oh, okay. It's going up, though. Good taking a minute. We're up to 136. Good question, sir. So then the other thing that I got to do is I got to make a Russian dressing. So some of the recipes I saw online called for a whole list of ingredients, right? Yeah. Majority of which are already in the Heinz chili sauce. It has ketchup. It has uh, vinegar. It has the the lemon, or lemon. It has everything in it except yep. for the mayonnaise. Yep. So we're gonna try to whip that up and see what happens. Well, Charlie's question may have to get postponed until I find my thermometers. Nicely. Nice, nice. Don't have much fragrance on. So, what was your inspiration for this this cook? I thought of, I wanted to do something different, not just your classic burger. And so, I toyed with tons of ways. I thought about shaping it into a round uh, thing. Uh, tube type thing like a hot dog and doing that and making chili burgers that way. Um, I thought about doing, I actually thought about putting sauerkraut in it, mixing it into the meat and cooking it that way. You know, it. I came up and then I said, I said, I, somehow just out of nowhere came this thought to do an inside out cheeseburger where the cheese is on the outside i'm like i've never seen that done so let's try it i've done it in a, one where you have the crusty outside and this will make a crusty outside by the way when i did a grilled cheese where i made a crusty outside and that's where i got the idea to do this is because of that and i'm like this if it worked for grilled cheese it'll work for this Right, right. And it worked real well for grilled cheese. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, I need to make more kimchi. Ate your last batch. I've got a little bit left from the uh, from the taste test that we did. The um. The um, 
mixing it into something made it so much better for me. Uh, oh, Nightbot says, don't forget to hit the like button. You know, not everybody likes kimchi. I love it. It, uh, by itself, it is definitely an acquired taste. My wife does not like it. But she doesn't like sauerkraut either. Although she's had it and stuff that she didn't know it was in there. And she was good with it. I said, you like pickles, you like cabbage. This is just fermented cabbage. It's, it's, think of it as pickled cabbage. Not exactly pickled like pickles. So Charlie's going to make cheeseburgers tomorrow, he said. All right. He likes his rare. Do you remember the, um, what do they call that? The uh, the tiger, the tiger burger, where they serve it to you raw? Yeah. They don't even heat it up. They just serve it to you raw. Yeah, I think it was a tiger burger. So when I heard like carnivore Kip talking about the lion diet, I was like, are you eating everything raw, like your burgers and everything? Mmm, <laughs> nice flavor. Mm. Okay. Just a little bit more. So, Mike, you never guess what I did over the weekend. Let's see. I talked about it last week, but it's okay. I remember something you talked about the day, if I can remember what it was. We had two other couples with me and my wife. Uh huh. And we walked a 5K. Oh, that's right. You were going to do a 5K. I had forgotten. Yeah. Yes. And your wife said, y'all, she wants to do a 5K every month or something. Yep. So we have one already scheduled for uh, February. It'll be February 17th. Um, a friend of ours who puts on, she does a, she has a nonprofit that she's feeding first responders barbecue. Uh, right. And, um, I mean, you've, you've seen me, you've heard me talk about her. Uh, what's up, Stephen? Hey, Stephen. Hey, Lep. Um, but she put up, did an event, and then they're, she's also sponsored by a Ford dealership here, here uh, next town up. And they're going in together and putting this on. So we've already got one scheduled for February. Okay. That'll work. So I have a, a cousin in North Atlanta. And we've been messaging back and forth. We're going to either try to get together in Charlotte or in Atlanta. Uh-huh. And do a 5K together. Okay. Because, you know, in, in, not only is eating healthy important, but you got to get moving. Yeah. The the mental health aspect of it is amazing. Yeah. Uh, getting out there, doing a little something, something. Today, I was kind of having a down day because it was cold. I usually take Wednesdays off. And I didn't do it yesterday because it was cold. Right. And I didn't get out in the afternoon because I, I found every excuse not to. <laughs> and then today I just was was kind of like a, a mental block day. And I was just like, you know what? Ah. And I should have. Because it's, it's good just to get out, walk. You know, if you got somebody with you, uh, I listened to Johnny Mangs, uh, his Pit Life Barbecue podcast. Uh, it's an Uncle Steve's affiliate. Y'all know Johnny Mags. Yep. Um, I listened to him with uh, he had a really good interview with TD's uh, Brew and Q. Um, the uh, Gallery Backyard Barbecue. I listened to his his interviews. 
you know, sometimes it's just good to get out there and listen to something different and just take that time. Yeah. Um, I, I did get to listen to some of Cindy. She had her uh, her show on with the uh, what was it? Just Jason? Not just Jason. It was a uh, the other Sorry. guy, with the Beard. Oh. Um, uh, oh Dustin, Cade. Cade. Dustin Cade. Yeah, Dustin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keto Simple. Yep, and that was a good that was a good conversation. Yep. So, if y'all, and, and I bring these other channels up because they're talking barbecue, they're talking cooking, they're talking, I mean, they're talking food, right? And my man, Tommy there, he's been doing some interviews with some other YouTubers and talking about YouTube and stuff. So that's something cool that, it, you know, you get somebody else's perspective. My man, Rob, over at the... Uh, over at Grill Yeah, he just, Rob Kimball, he just changed his name, started a new channel. He goes in depth into that. Pretty sweet. Uh, these things are coming along pretty well. Check this out, Mike. Oh, yeah. They already turned colors. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's holding its shape, too. Yeah. I'm impressed with that. So I'm going to, I don't know where they're at temperature-wise, but that's pretty quick. Yeah. I'm going to check for Charlie because Charlie likes his a certain temperature. Yeah, he, he's a rare guy. I like him that way too. Running about a 156. Right in the center, 130, 130 in the center. Hey, there you go. You're getting good. That's been a pretty quick cook. It is. That ain't been but 10 minutes. Yep. I guess I could turn the heat down a little bit. And then I'm going to add my cheese right on top. There you go. So you see what I've done here, folks, is I put cheese down onto the griddle. And I'm letting it just kind of toast onto the meat and adhere to the to the I'm sorry the tortilla that I use on it and and had it just uh, start to melt and it's going to crust a little bit. All right, flip it. If I can get this flip without any kind of difficulty, we'll be in great shape. Say a prayer. Look at that. That works. Now, that may look really dark, but it is crusty cheese. And I love crusty cheese. Now, hey, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on the inside now. So that it uh, will adhere to it more, the tortilla will. So just hang with me just a moment. Hey, uh, hey, Scotty, how are you doing, buddy? Lep, I got a question for you, buddy. You got that new pizza oven from Blackstone. How do you like it? Like, seriously. And... Can you recreate Mike's cheese bun burger in that? What do you think of that? That's a good question. He got the new this new pizza oven. It's like a an electric pizza oven. I saw that video on TikTok of all places where he had he was cooking in the pizza oven. He was cooking wings. Yeah. That, that is if that works like you like it looked like it was working. Oh Lord. <laughs> oh man. Look at that. That is golden. I love it. 
Love it, I love it, I love it. Now let's take that off of there. Sprinkle us a little cheese so it'll stick to it on the inside. And we're going to be eating here shortly. Someone had a little bit of smoke bomb to this uh, medley right here. Uh huh. It just needs a little something, something. Oh. So I got another question, Mike. I was sent from a subscriber, a.k.a. my vegan Chris. Uh, I wouldn't. Hold on a second. Let me see what Lep says here. Uh, I wouldn't attempt a cheese bun. Oh, he's got his griddle for that. All right. All right. I'm just curious, man. Uh, so far, I like it. I still need to do some pizzas in it. The pizza oven, air fryer, air bake. Oh, nice. Wow. It, like it was like an all-in-one kind of fun thing. Terry had just finished eating. How's, how's the shoulder doing, buddy? Oops. I do not eat enough pizza to buy one of them. Me neither. Uh, so anyway, my my subscriber, Vegan Chris, also my cousin, <laughs> sent me this awesome little thing here. What do y'all think of this? Come out of the new Hot Ones series. Queso Sing Queso. Oh. So it's out of the new Hot Ones series. And it is a plant-based queso-style hot sauce. So we're looking at doing a something with it. So what do y'all think we should do? Plant-based uh, nuggets? Or what? MBL, what's going on, buddy? I uh, hope you're all doing well. We're doing pretty good, brother. Shoulders better than the therapist expected it to be. Awesome. Awesome, man. Keep rocking that therapy. Oh, we got Tom's Food Factory. Six hey, months bud. to get a pizza? I'll tell you what. Um, that's probably my, my, my thing's getting hot, probably. Um, we did, I did a cooking and grilling with, Grilling and chilling with Mojo did a pizza, Sloppy Joe, and I remade it with a little twist, a little, little more ingredients, and it tasted exactly like the, the topping, like you took a pizza and scraped it off. It was awesome. Uh, let's see. Who else we got? Tom, how you doing, Tom's Food Factory? Uh... Good to see everybody. Roasted some Brussels sprouts and did some chicken wings so far. Nice. Wow. Oh, Brussels that, sprouts. Oh, yeah. That killer on sprouts. No oh, good, I think. Great. Brussels sprouts are an amazing thing. Yep. Ground beef tacos. Raw, they taste like crap. All right, Charlie, I see it. Tempeh ground beef tacos. With this queso sauce. I can see that. Okay. Okay. Hey, Rolling Smoke. What's going on, bud? We are trying different versions of burgers. So I have a Reuben stuffed burger going on in a Dutch oven with, a, I don't even, some cauliflower rice, riced cauliflower yeah not cauliflower rice tom will have a fit i hear him i hear him in my head ah get out of there tom <laughs> there you and go folks made russian dressing mike's doing a inside out burger yeah inside out cheeseburger the cheese is on the outside 
and I am going to do. Mr. Tom, check this out, buddy. It's not boiled. There's no water in it. There's no water in it. You like the rotating table? Yeah, dude, I bet that's. I, I bet that's awesome, man. I, it'd be worth playing around with for sure. Uh, Tipe is a great replacement for me. Now, the last time I had it, it looked like strips of soybeans all put together. Uh, enjoying these guys cooking? Hey, man, if you, if you like what we're doing, hell yeah. I like y'all watching. <laughs> I do too. You're right. Charlie does eat tempeh, and you see how normal he is. <laughs> uh, Rolling Smoke says we're looking good. Looking good. All right. Well, Charlie, I think it's about time to check the temperature of these. It's about 180. 185. Right in the center, we're 165. So I'm going to say these are done. What do y'all think? Yep. And I'm going to say that was a pretty darn fast cook. This was too. And I know that, and I know the burgers were thin because we farmed it up and around, and you smashed yours. Yeah, I did. Look so. Look at that, folks. Fish. Woo. Oh, oh, dang it. I hit the wrong button, Mike. No worries. That's all right. There we go. Oops. Wrong one. Hold on. <laughs> we are technically challenged, folks. <laughs> Both of us. Well, I didn't want to do that. Ah, dang it. I got uh, it. I got it. I'm like all over the place. There you go. Look at that. You can still take off one of the things because one of them's got cheese on it, but you can take off one of the lids at the top one, put you some mayo, mustard, ketchup on there if you want, or just eat it like this because it'll be wonderful. And that cheese is on the outside and it's crusty and it's going to have a crunch. So there you have it. All right, now I got cheeseburger. Now I got to get this out of there without burning myself up. I hear that. All right. I have gloves somewhere. Yeah. All right, now y'all can probably help me. I got these long gloves, leather ones, but I still—I mean, you hold anything for a long time, it gets hot. Yep. So I guess the question is, I, I've got several different pairs, and they do—I mean, they get burning hot. So, is there a glove that re resists the heat? The best, better than normal. What kind are those? The Gorilla Holics. Gorilla Holics. So I haven't had those. I've had these ones called um, Dragon Knuckles. Don't get them wet, and they they will not deflect the heat when they're wet. They will conduct it. I got our buddy. Charlie, and, uh, uh, cooking secrets for me. Oh, look! Oh, I wish you'd look. Oh, man, that's so good looking. Man, I'm gonna slide this over. <clears throat> I'm gonna slide this this over.
Oh, that dude is hot. Oh, I can see it. It's perfectly centered. Up, oh, up, oh, not anymore. Come on up with just a hair. Or move your rack. Move your rack just a little bit closer to the camera. Now it's centered pretty good. Oh, move it. <laughs> move it back just a hair. There you go. That's perfect. All right. So now I got to get it off there and onto whatever I'm going to plate. Maybe yep. I won't. Yep. Maybe I won't. Well, I don't know. The dude, dude always tells me he can't see anything. So. Uh, do we go with the black? Yeah. That's a good contrast with the white uh, of the cheese on top. Or blue. Oh, that's a hard one now. The blue. The blue? Yeah. Uh, James, got, got, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Tom's Food Factory says, Lee, there's this new kitchen gadget called spatula, and it'll be great for moving hot foods off of that rack. <laughs> you know, it took, it took me about, I don't know, six months to get a hot pad out of here. So... <laughs> It did take me about six months to get a hot pad. So, right. Will and Smoke Barbecue, nice to see you. So, we, uh, I'm going to try a taste of mine right now. I'm not going to put anything on it because I don't think it needs anything. So, cheers, everybody. Mm hmm. This was a yeah. nice one at the lodge store. Oh, yeah. And it is a spatula. It's just a fish spatula. Not really digging out that stuff. Let's see. He said the blue plate with the white spots is missing an X Wing fighter and a Death Star or the Death Star. That's that's beautiful right there. Could you hear the crunch when I bit into it? Yeah. That crunch is fantastic. Let's see. Rubens with Alabama white sauce, horseradish, obviously. Blue plate with the white spots. You know, I've got... I've got the Death Star right there. It's here. Okay. Trying to get this centered up here. Sorry, I got quiet. That's okay. I'm gonna mix up my my uh, if I can find the bowl. Mix up my broccoli. Because we got to have a side. What do you think of that, Mike? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. That is, that is going to be mighty fine eating right there. Mighty fine eating right there. Throw some of this medley.
There we go. All right. I'm uh, mixing up my side dish here, my broccoli salad, which is basically just putting a little mayo in it. And sometimes I put a little cheese in it, but I got a lot of cheese on this thing tonight, so I'm going to leave the cheese off of it. And I'll salt it and pepper it when I get it on my plate because my brother-in-law doesn't eat salt. Health reasons. He used to love salt. Because he is his sister's brother. Because she is the salt queen. What is it you say, Lee? I use a crane to get it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Every time I, every time Mike gets a gets a salt shaker out, he always grabs the tub. <laughs> and then he's like, like a crane. <laughs> oh. She, she loves her salt. What can I say? All right. Yeah, buddy, that was good cook. Yes, indeed. And we did it in less than an hour. Yeah, I was, I don't know about you, but I was surprised. I was surprised yours did. I wasn't worried about my making. I really thought that one was going to take longer than it did. Yes, I, I did too. I was like, man, I don't know. But the Dutch oven worked fantastic. It really did. That I'm, Oh, man. You have discovered something with that. And that was, I'm telling you, that was genius coming up with using it like that. Well, I'm trying to come up with different ways to use you know, use cast iron mm -hmm. and so you can use it as an everyday life in, in your everyday life. Right. Right. And I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm writing down these cooks to try to have a log of using these, this iron. Yep. So, uh, I need to patent that cooking method. <laughs> so, so I'm like, okay, so like I'm, I'm documenting this cook. So either tonight or, or tomorrow, I'll sit down and I'll write down this whole cook and the cast iron that I used. That way there's kind of a, not a recipe, but a guideline. And you could do it in this. So if you look up a 12 inch Dutch oven, you look up lidless, you know, when I get all this done, lidless will have its own little cook history and kind of just thinking like that. So I don't know. Something silly. Yeah. But it's giving me something to do. And I'm, you know, I'm kind of, kind of passionate about it. Kind of. Hans Food Factory says you need to patent that cooking method. I agree. I bet you I don't I don't know anybody's ever thought to do that with a Dutch oven. Not I mean like I've never they do, they do camp stuff, but you know, like over a fire or whatever. Right. But I've not seen them do it on a stovetop. Because right. why would you? You have a skillet. Exactly. And and making a bowl with the ground beef and putting it in there to cook on a rack, turning your Dutch oven into a true oven to get it done, that's genius. So, yeah, I'm just trying to think of things a little outside the box and make it entertaining. Yeah. You know, I, I mean. That. I love that idea. I mean, you throw out the, the burger. Okay. 
I can do smash burgers. I can just do a regular burger, whatever. Let's try something different, man. Yep. Uh, I prefer cast iron over any type of pots for sure. Yep. Absolutely. I'm, I agree with that. Uh, a few years from now, I'll be a billionaire and you'll be like Tom and Charlie who? <laughs> man, I'll tell you what. I hit... I'll end up on the Food Network, and I'll take you all with me. There you go. I'll be your yes man. Yeah, buddy. Say, will this work? Yes, sir. You're going to say, uh, sure. Uh, yes, sir. My ex-wife used to rotate. Oh. Yeah, and James, that's the other thing is, is I'm trying to go through my iron. The last, I don't know, since since uh, the new year started, I've used one skillet four times. I haven't used this one at all this year, so this was the first cook for the year in it. Yeah. So I'm trying to to also rotate through the iron because when you got a few pieces like I got, it's hard to get through them. Do it. Yep. Yeah. But uh, Charlie, you're not dust in the wind, my friend. Not at all. Nope. All right, Lee, you going to taste that? Oh, oh, I don't even know where to begin, dude. Like, this is the, the, the picture that I just took. Oh, yeah. I'm you telling you, it's it. beautiful. That is absolute gorgeous. It, it, it's really monotone looking because, you know, the, the, the corned beef and the crowd, I probably should switch them around and put the crowd underneath. Lesson learned. But yeah, let's give this a whirl. <clears throat> now, see when I cut it, the corned beef fell out of the yep. out of the burger. Like that's almost like a pie, the pie shell. Exactly. You've created a meat pie with a meat crust. Ooh. Oh, I can guarantee that's excellent. Bread would have ruined it. Yep. 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 Could have been different with not canned corned beef, yes. But hey, it hey. works. I went with what I had in the pantry. You know what? Canned corned beef gets a bad rap. Yep. That stuff has got some, it, you can toy around with that and you can make some really tasty stuff. If you just take it out and try to eat it like that, yeah, it's crap, you know, but toy with it and play with it and do it. I mean, I turned it into, uh, uh, I, I used it to make uh, uh, corned beef hash. Yeah. That stuff is good. I mean, it, it ain't nothing short of wonderful. Rolling smoke. Maybe we'll do some next week on eggs. Yeah. Um, it's next week. That's a good idea. It's heat control, my friend. Yes. Where I cook everything on medium out here, I, I have my burners on low. My electric stovetop in the house, I run on medium. When I'm doing eggs, I have it halfway between low and medium. Yeah. You got the eggs are low and slow. Yep, yep, and I'll let it heat up thoroughly up to where you can put your hand over and go, you know, count to like seven, and you're then you're about 275, 300 range, yep. and then I'll pour my egg in slowly, let it go slow, and, and that's how I do that. Uh, always oil or butter before you add your... Yes. Your your egg. Eggs. Yes. Uh, and if hot you iron, it. cold oil. Uh-huh. Um if you're gonna use if you're gonna turn the heat up, the last part of the cook is when you would do that. Don't do it before then. After I recommend staying at the same heat throughout. Um if you're if you're doing a whole cook, 
and I've done this where I've had like, say I just turned off the heat and I have an egg to cook, I will leave, turn the heat off and the residual heat will cook it. Exactly. Yeah. If you go on an electric stove, especially. And it's, yeah, it, it's, and if you pull eggs off when they're done, they're going to be overcooked by the time you eat them. <laughs> Somebody agrees. They love it. Yes. Yes. Canned corned beef. Can't beat it. Yep. It's, well, one of those, it's not a, um, it's not something we get often because I'm the only one that eats it, but I, I don't mind it at all. And, you know, man, you buy why it's on sale. Because it was, for the name brand, it was $7 a can. Woo. Yeah. Dang, when I bought this, it was down like $2.50. Oh, I sent Paige a picture of what I made, and she said, I hope you may, you saved me some. <laughs> I did. I did not. You're yeah. to me too, and I'm going to eat one. All right, so... We've been on here a little over an hour now. Yeah, that cook. was a good. That was a good cook. I'm, I'm it was completely impressed. Yep. Sometimes I impress myself. I agree. I agree. We both did good. Good job, corned buddy. Pass with eggs. Yes, I put a I put a fried egg on top of that corned beef pass. So that was don't leave me hanging here. Come on. Where's my where? Damn. There you go. There we go. So, uh, folks, supper can be done in no time flat. Just give it a, give it a go. I know most of y'all know that. I hope y'all have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Eggs, something with eggs next week, right? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do something with eggs. Uh, right. I'll have my cast iron out, and uh, yeah. So roll and smoke. We're going to do something with eggs. Scrambled eggs or something. Yeah. It's some kind of uh, cat, whatever. Something with eggs. Something with eggs. Yep. And and All eggs right. is the star of the dish. Uh, Tom says catfish hash. You know what? I'd eat that. Yeah. I would eat that. There's not much I don't eat. Same here. Lima beans and radishes, but anyway, that's another topic for another day. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we will see you all next week with something with eggs. And uh, man, well, y'all be awesome. It'll be, be something reason, with eggs as a star. Be the reason why somebody smiles today. Because yep. y'all made me smile. Y'all made me smile too. So y'all yeah. have a great week, and we'll see you on the next one. There you go. What do you say about what do you say? Two things. Yep, there's only two rules in cooking. Only two. Did you have fun? Did it taste good? Rock on. Y'all are awesome. Have a great day. Y'all take care.